adieu. Thank you. Hey everyone, it's Wednesday, July 26th, and you're here at the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Working Group for Chaos. I'm Elizabeth. Good to see everyone here. Yay. Such uh, happy, good faces. I love it. Um, just a quick reminder, this meeting is for us to discuss um, diversity, equity, and inclusion <clears throat> topics in chaos. So it could be something internal to chaos, it could be a metric, it could be something external. And this is really kind of the place where all of those conversations happen. And as uh, all chaos meetings, we are under the chaos code of conduct. So keep that in mind as you interact with us here. You are more than welcome to keep your cameras on, off, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Um, that's what we're going with. And you are more than welcome to um, just interact with us on the chat on the side. Um, yeah, so um, I think that's it. I think that's kind of all of the beginning stuff. Thank you, Matt, for continuing to drop the minutes in the chat. You bet. So if you haven't added your name and you would like to, <clears throat> you certainly can. If you need those uh, that link again, Matt will be happy to drop that <laughs> in the chat again. Um, just let us know how, how you're doing. Looks like a lot of people are, are hot. Rhea's just having struggles with chess. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. You'll get him next time, Rhea. I know it. <laughs> Faith in you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, There's a really cool thing in Seattle called the Black Cat Cafe that does chess nights on Wednesday night. So we're going to try it in our office yeah. as a happy hour tonight, which I think will be a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yes. And you will have your revenge. I feel it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't lose any of them, but <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, okay, so first on our agenda, we were looking at the, um, let me just pull this up. I have too many tabs open here. Um, uh, last week, I agreed to kind of just look through our repo because we haven't done that in a minute. So um, just want to pull this up. We do have a repo for this working group. Um, there are some outstanding issues uh, that I linked here. The first one is this um, inclusive naming checklist. We had talked about doing a review internally about our own documentation and our own, um, just our own work to make sure that we don't have any of these problematic terms in our stuff. Um, I think we had had one or two people express interest, but I don't know that movement has been made on that in a while. So um, I was just gonna bring it up again. If someone has interest in this and capacity to kind of do this, um, I think if I remember, and someone please correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that Delight was going to be working on this, um, but I have not talked to him, so I don't know if he has made progress. I feel like there was a checklist somewhere that he was going through, like just a list of all our docs. So um, I kind of wanted to throw it back out at the group. Uh, I know Delight's been super busy. Do, do we want to incorporate this anywhere in our, our current knowledge base audit, or do we want this as a separate? Um, project um yeah capacity is the forever challenge uh, definitely and that's kind of why it's been kind of lingering on uh, not definitely not from a, a lack of interest i think but it's just that capacity piece mm. that gets us every time right yeah <laughs> so um i just thought i would throw that out here and just kind of see what the community had to say about it wanted to do with it so you are <clears throat> excuse me you are correct there had been interest earlier but i don't think uh progress had been made at least not that I've seen. So I think the the task is meant to be fairly straightforward, just in the sense of taking a look across our website page. Actually, it could just, honestly, I think it could be as, as we decided really just a search in the GitHub repositories, because most of our web pages are pulled from the GitHub repository. So it's really just identifying, Kevin, you're nodding, but it's really just you know doing a search on a couple of key terms um, and then mapping as those terms are found, um, just where they are, and then just bringing that forward so we can fix that. I think also one other um, aspect of this is this was the original list that we were going through um, that Matt had put in, but that list may have changed since then. So um, maybe someone could, you know, just kind of pop in this. Sorry? The original list is what? Uh, the, the original list of terms we were going to look for is right here. 
Um, but this may have the inclusive naming initiative folks may have altered this list in the last year and a half. Is that the list? I think that those are just like metrics that we're proposing. If you go to the issue itself. Yeah, that's, am I not on there? Oh, yeah. I'm not, oh, I'm not. Okay, hold on. I'm sharing the wrong dang screen. <laughs> like I'm pointing to it, Matt. Can't you see it? <laughs> I see what she is. Oh gosh. Yeah. I just, while you were talking, I spilled coffee all down myself too. So yeah, You're it's all... that kind of day. You know what, and yesterday was that kind of day too. I don't understand. Oh, you got it, okay. Here's the list. Yes. Yeah, they just they just have the three that are uh, at, a, at a high level. Okay, the tier, so- The tier don't... ones are the yeah. ones we really wanna make sure we re remove immediately. Yeah. Um, we Do we need to check in with these folks then to see if they have updated the list or added anything since January of 2022? That looks this looks really short. I, I I just know that we went through an effort as a corporation. I, I think it was before I was going to do a lot of this type of stuff, and it seems like our list is significantly larger than that. Although I don't know where I can put my fingers on it right at the moment. If you're interested in expanding the list, that is. So okay, yeah, that looks like maybe. They have expanded um, to that list. Then, yeah, right? so we could. Rhea, do you know where you, was your list made internally, or did it follow? Do you know if it followed this the inclusive naming initiative? I have no idea. I, I said it was some before I even joined HP, so I'm not okay. even sure who was involved in the project. Gotcha. But okay. Oh, there's more. Oh, sorry. I was just looking at. I I just was looking at that tier one. So there, or below. Sorry, I didn't see the whole. Do people really use a board in software context? I haven't seen that one. Oh, I guess programs abort. Yeah, abort the process. Or... Right. I forgot about that. So there I haven't are... seen that in a long time. So am I right in thinking there are seven tier one bees now? Yeah, that's that's them, right? It, it, let me go. Let me try tier two and see if it. Yeah. Yeah. Tier two is that, and then tier three is that. Pen in the middle. Watching my screen. That's no. tier three. Tier one, you are correct, Kevin, is what I'm saying. Tier one is okay. those terms. So I mean, part I'm, of that task then would be just to update our our list in the issue and then search. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I can do this. You you could. Um but I think it's also like if nobody else, I think because it's a good you know way for someone to contribute. But um, yeah. again, it's that capacity. <laughs> so, like, yeah. We could even search at the org level, I, I believe. Just like do a high level and just see where any. Yeah, I mean, I think so. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah, where they where they pop in. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that we don't use a lot of this language uh, in regard to the. Uh, uh, master we changed everything to main two three years ago so let me just i'll just if somebody wants to help me on this call that'd be great yeah. I'd be, um, but either way i can just do a tier one for the before the next meeting and just kind of bring that forward okay i'm putting you down as an action that's fine and if anybody wants to join on the call just send me a note no problem there Awesome. Thank you, Matt. Yep, you bet. And then, yeah. Okay. The next, yeah. Um, I just, I will make a comment. Rhea, we are going to talk about the badging stuff and the DEI.MD stuff today. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Um, the next thing on our agenda is the metric ideas. Um, if you go back, Matt, to the GitHub repo, um, the rest of the issues, besides the um, survey that Anita's working on, are all metric ideas. So I don't, I just didn't know if we want to leave these open, close them. I mean, they just kind of linger out there. I don't know what we want to do with them. Um, we, I mean, we can leave them is <laughs> one option. A second option is we could put them into the spreadsheet, close the issue, but then post a link to the closed issue. Yeah. 
you know, in the, so we have the metrics. Mm -hmm. So just come in here and then on the DEI tab, just have them as considering. The problem is, is like, as we've talked about these red rows, just until somebody has like a deep interest in moving the metric forward, or we have a real need, say in one of the, like the badging programs, for example, until we have a real need, these don't really get developed. That's a fact. I, I think that's okay though. I think we, we've talked a little bit about that in some of the other, in some of the other meetings about, yeah. uh, we only, we really only want to be defining metrics that people are using or people have a desire to use. So if there's, if there's not a whole lot of interest in moving them forward, I think we just, we wait until there is. Is that that may be an indicator that the, the met, that we're maybe forcing the issue. Forcing and, the um, issue. I see what you did there, Kevin. What do you do? The issue, because they're issues. Sorry. <laughs> it's a joke that was funny in my head only, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Usually um, how it goes. <laughs> uh and I mean some of these, as you can see, are from 20, 2020. You know, they're getting pretty old. Yeah, I feel like we should just move them to the spreadsheet because I feel like then if somebody comes to our repo and they look at this, they're going to be like, yeah, nobody's even doing anything, any work at all. Okay. I'm fine with that, having them just kind of tracked in one location. Elizabeth, do you want to just move? <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll take that action item uh, just to make sure that they are in the spreadsheet if they are not already. Let me just add this to the minutes. And then we can close these issues. Mm -hmm. so the issue we have this remarks comment, or remarks comment, remarks column. Yeah. Okay. Do we do we just want to move the ones that have comments attached to them, or if there are, if there are no comments attached, should we just should we just archive it and leave it at that? Probably. Yeah. What is this one? Yeah, some of these I don't even remember. Okay. Yeah, I know that one's in the spreadsheet because we've talked about that one a lot. Okay. Okay. I'll take that. Okay. Thanks. Um, next on the agenda is our onboarding course. If you, um, this is something that we are developing currently, um, just very, very early in the process, super early. So if this is something that is interesting to you and you want to join that team or help with that project, um, you can join this uh, education channel on Slack. And a high level, what mm -hmm. this is, is it's gonna be um, basically like little learning modules that newcomers can follow if um, if they like. And it's gonna be in a, a learning management system. So it's kind of like the, the chaos manual from start to finish. And then also we're gonna have some um, resources for those who are new to open source as well, because we have quite a few of those folks in our community. So um, we have kind of, we've broken it out into two focus areas, I guess, or teams within that project. One is gonna focus on the content and structure, and um, second is gonna focus on the technology and the platform. So if you go to that channel, we've also linked to the doc, um, which I can actually find, uh, where we're just, we have just like a doc, a working doc where we're just kind of dumping ideas right now. Um, and that is bookmarked in that Slack channel. What's the so, Slack channel called? Education. Oh, uh, okay. So I must have we, to add it to my list. Yeah, I know. One more Slack channel for you to keep track of. No, so it's like, it used um, to always just come up, but. Yeah, we, we named it education instead of like onboarding specifically because we are um, thinking about other things that we can help educate folks on. So it's not maybe just onboarding to chaos, but also like. Here's about open source, here's about 
And we've even talked this morning, here's a tutorial on how to get started with Python, you know, like, and, and, like, it, it could build out into like a big um, place for folks to go. Yeah. Right? And we're not talking about reinventing the wheel on a lot of this, we might be, you know, including um, other tutorials, other places, resources from other places. So yeah, but that's kind of what the content and structure folks are going to talk about. And um, we don't have meetings for this. This meeting right here is where we're going to talk about it. Um, so don't worry about having to come to another meeting. Um, yeah. Do we want to, do we want to talk about any of that today or do we want to move on? Um, so I'm, I'm in the process of installing a test Moodle instance, um, so that we can play with Moodle and see how it fits with GitHub education. Um, GitHub education is a little bit easier to manage inside of a learning management system. And we had discussed using something like Moodle. So it's, uh, it's not very difficult to set up Moodle. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'd, I'd plan to have it set up by today, but uh, <clears throat> uh, it's not quite running yet. Yeah, that's OK. And it'll be at moodle.chaos.io for a Moodle test drive. Do you want to drop that in there too, Sean? In the yeah, minute? I'm put, I'm, yeah, I'll put it in the minutes. I'm putting it in the Slack channel right now. Okay, perfect. So I think like the idea too is to work mostly async on this project. So maybe in that working doc, which I will find and link in the minutes too, just as a extra kind of So yeah, we are really um, hoping that we get some newcomers to help us with this because newcomers have the best experience of being a newcomer and <laughs> knowing what they don't know. So um, yeah, we would love it if you're new to chaos and you want to help us sort out what things would be helpful to you as a newcomer, we would absolutely love that. I had just dropped in our conversation from that one meeting where we talked about a lot. I just literally copied and pasted so it can be cleaned up. Uh, I didn't want us to lose that context of that of those conversations that we had. That's why I just dropped it in there. So yeah, so should we continue this conversation here? Do we want to move on? What do we what do we want to do? I think in the hopes of kind of getting to this DEI.MD stuff and the badging stuff today, maybe we could move on. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. I concur. Okay. Um, and then again, we can just work async in the education channel and in the docs. Yeah. Yep. Um, next one is um, yesterday. I just wanted to give a quick update on this. Um, so it was super interesting. Yesterday, I attended an allyship workshop um, with the Google Summer of Code mentors. And um, it was super interesting. Uh, one quick thing I want to say <laughs> is that we got chaos actually got a shout out an unprompted shout out in the workshop from another attendee, which was really awesome as a, a place that they felt comfortable sending folks to. So I that made my heart super happy. Yes, it was a good one. It was a good, a good shout out and um, just kind of a, a speaks to the dedication of our whole community in making this a welcoming and inclusive place. So thank you. I about cried. I might cry right now. I don't know. It just really struck me because um, it was completely unprompted and um, yeah, it was really awesome. So thank you everybody for being just wonderful folks and spreading the love and being inclusive to everybody who comes to um, to chaos. Um, just some quick um, things that they went over for anybody who's interested in um, kind of, you know, uh, learning more about what it means to be an ally. Um, oh yeah, Henrietta, go ahead. So I think you should finish because what I'm going to say is like a little, um, it deviates a little from what you are saying. So I think you should finish then maybe I would continue. Okay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, I just wanted to, so these were some of the pillars of um, being a good ally. And um, it's, it's mostly building relationships built on trust and humility. 
and recognizing your own privilege in a particular situation, because we each have some sort of privilege, even if we're marginalized in other ways, we um, do have some privilege in certain situations. Um, and also just kind of recognizing your own biases towards folks who look like you, who agree with you, <laughs> who you like, <laughs> or who you know you find um, charming or pleasant. So just kind of recognizing those. Um, and also centering empowerment by um, letting those folks who have been harmed in a situation decide how they wanna be supported instead of like swooping in and deciding on their behalf of what you think should be done and how you know you want to handle it it's mostly giving them the agency um, and the options um, and and really letting them drive and and decide how they want to be supported and um, that's in a way helping to favor advocacy for them and not rescuing them from uh, the situation and then the um the third one was uh which is really important um and I haven't personally always been great at this and I, I want to be better at it, which is following up with the person and really being consistent and not just reaching out to them when you see something that is a problem and then like <coughs> one and done and like one and done is not really helpful. Um, and but being consistent and just continuing to build those relationships with folks um, either in or out of, of troubled times um, just really uh, being consistent in the way that you. Um, uh, build that trust. So uh, those were just some things that uh, I thought were super interesting. I wanted to just bring to this group of uh, what um, I learned next week, I believe. Um, I think it's next week. I'm also going to be doing a bystander intervention training um, with the same folks. So um, I will also bring those learnings back because sometimes we might see things and we just don't know what to do in those situations. So um, I'm hopeful that that will be helpful. Um, just, you know, like as our community grows, I just feel like there is just more potential for things to happen because people are complicated. And um, so I, if that's okay, I'll just bring it back to this group as well. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think knowing how to intervene as a bystander is like, I don't know, the way I do it is the best way. And it's harder online um, when you're a bystander in a virtual situation. Yeah, it really is. It really, really is. So I would I would I think that would be great, Elizabeth, if, if you shared some of that back. I, awesome. I'm keen to see it. I shall do so then. Uh, <laughs> um, great, Elizabeth, just a quick a reminder. It's uh, important we say people are different instead of saying people are complicated. You know what that means, right? Yeah, yes. I yeah, I mean. I should say relationships are complicated and interactions are complicated. <laughs> Maybe that's a way to say that. <laughs> Thanks, <Hi. sir. laughs> Henrietta has her hand raised. Yes. I, I think I'm finished now, Henrietta, so go for it. Um, I, um, I, want, I want to talk about the, when you mentioned the um, new comments experience like you wanted um opinions from the newcomers experience that um it was at that point that i i raised my hand i don't know if it's it's, it's is it okay if i go ahead or yes it's, it's, please do yes yes okay. of course uh, so um so the funny story is i came across chaos um from one pi ladies group so i i code in python i'm still learning and um, I'm actually a medical doctor, so I come from a medical profession. So when I saw community health bits, um, I actually thought it had something to do with health. I um, related things that I should be looking in IT. So that's actually what made me. Can you hear me? Yes, That's sorry. actually what made me join the group, the chaos group. So um, from my perspective, so I started like searching on chaos and um, actually I saw that it's a community health analytics, open software. Um, honestly, there was, how I understand chaos now, the explanation that was given is not how to put it, it wasn't too clear, right, on because they kept on talking about community health and I get to know that, okay, so it's not just about, um, it's not actually about health. Health is, it's more about um, inclusion, diversity, um, um, 
well, for lack of a better word, the healthiness of the community when it comes to open software, right? And I felt it would be really helpful if um, maybe some illustrations were given um, when it comes to, like when I Google chaos, the first thing I see, the website I go to, the kind of explanation that's given, because it's still, I, I've just done it. I've gone there and I still get the impression that I still have something to do a lot with medical health. I don't know. I mean, medical is not open, it's not put there, but when you come to like the medical field and you say community health, there's actually a whole subject or topic that is community health. So my mind goes there. I don't know if you get me. So I thought it was actually application of open source to community health, which has to do with something along the lines of public health. Yeah. But I mean, I came in and even though it wasn't exactly what I was looking for, I actually liked the group, so I actually still stayed in and enjoyed. Yeah, so so I think it will be very um, helpful if it's maybe clearer on that. And then if there are maybe, um, maybe just like a little explanation on the fact that like the actual work that you do, because it talks about analytics and I'm thinking, okay, I analyzing maybe prevalences of diseases. I analyzing how... Um, the health of, you know, IT professionals, what exactly I analyze, it talks about metrics, what metrics, what parameters are you looking at? Like, I I couldn't really get that sense from the very first time I looked up chaos. I mean, that is from my perspective. Someone else can share. Uh, thank you so much, Hareta. I think I share a kind of view because mm -hmm. there was one student who worked on the uh, Google Summer of Doc. I think uh, Jaskira, I think towards the end of his project, he himself was still really confused about the health aspect. It is not that chaos is not clear. It is just because the conception was really from the from a foundational point from people who understand software and the community from that perspective. But I totally agree with you that it could bring this kind of ambiguity, which uh, it's something that they could uh, easily clarify with some few tweaks of words. But that indication you really pointed out, we have already encountered it even from people from within. So it's not something new. And I think uh, what uh, Elizabeth is doing and every other community member, they are working, it's just something that we can really clarify a bit. Yeah, thank you for that sharing. You're welcome. Definitely. And I, I think others have also heard this. I know I did hear this at FOSSI as well, um, but I was face to face so I could just explain it right then. So Kevin has an idea to fix this in the about section. Um, so let's work on that. Um, in the not, in really, uh, not really an idea, just a question when we land on that first page. Maybe is there one sentence, is there one sentence we can add to that what is chaos part that would help alleviate the confusion. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I agree. And also just to add from what Kevin said, like when we say health, we could put in double quote what we just like a few, like one or two words, what we mean by that. I yeah. mean, it's just brainstorming just to expand. Maybe the second, the second sentence of this, what is chaos could explain what we mean by health. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Thank you. That was super, super helpful and um, perfect perspective from a newcomer of things that we already assume we know. And so that was really, really helpful. Thank you. Um, we will add an extra sentence in there and hopefully that will help. Um, in the interest of time, I know um, we want to get to badging, so I'm going to jump ahead because um, I know we have folks on here who are interested in talking about the project badging in particular. Um, quickly, just want to say thank you to the new event badgers who have signed up. We had just had a, um, an, an initiate uh, orientation last week, so thank you to our new badgers. We have a whole a few group, a new group of folks as well, so just thank you to them. 
Um, and then let's get on to project badging. So um, Ria, I know you had had some questions about that. And I'm wondering if you um, just want to ask the questions or if you want to, like, how do you, how do you want to proceed? I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I mean, first of all, just compliments on all the work that you guys do to promote DEI because it's super important. And I think these sort of proactive ideas are what keep the topic in conversations and focus on it. So thank you for all of that. When I looked through this DEI MD, I think a lot of this is really fantastic, but my sense is that it seem to apply more to something like a project like chaos as opposed to say a project itself that is just an open source project some code out there and i wasn't quite sure if i understood what the focus of this overall was. so i wanted to throw that out there as an initial question and then secondly about whether a if, if the ambit includes projects itself maybe there's room for a second set of criteria and some of the criteria in here didn't seem to apply to a specific coding project directly but i i defer to whatever you guys have discussed in the past which i'm not as familiar with so looking for a little bit of feedback on what the goals of this look yeah, sure. So um, the the DEI.md file is meant to to be potentially used across any variety of open source projects. So the descriptions that we have here, those are ones that we we wrote ourselves. So like they may have kind of a chaos, <clears throat> and we might want to re rewrite those a little bit to be because these are just um these are just ideas you know what i mean this is these are just sample descriptions and so maybe rewriting these a little bit with people who are not in the chaos project could be helpful just to help kind of get projects who are more coding oriented or just extremely coding oriented um better ways to think about how they are addressing example, project access or communication transparency so maybe that would be a helpful place to start that sounds awesome <coughs> all of these ideas you have here are great especially for something like chaos or a subgroup under the linux foundation if that was the scope of a project but if the project is something like say open ssl how do they exercise dei I don't know that they're doing virtual meetings on OpenSSL. Maybe they are. I'm just not familiar with it. Or that they're necessarily doing global chapters associated with a given totally fair. Yep, totally fair. So that's a that's a great point. Um, do you have thoughts on how we could maybe connect with a few folks that could help us, if not rewrite some of these examples, you know, provide like F G H, you know what I mean? These are these are just meant to be examples. So they're not meant to be like things you must do in your project, but we could, I think it makes a lot of sense to reach out to additional groups. Well, I think one of the secondary questions then is that if we're talking about doing badging, is the badging simply that you have a DEI.md file? And it could be a completely empty file, but really saying, hey, we're interested in DEIMD. You can put a pull request for things in here. Or are there specific things that are necessary in order to achieve that to be able to label yourself as a DEI friendly project? And the intent, the intention is not just to have an empty DEI.md file. I figured as much. <laughs> but to, but to have a project reflect on, say, for example, communication transparency, and just talk openly in that file about how they as a project try to promote or do promote transparency in the communication they have. So in the decisions that they're making within the project and how they're sharing that publicly with everybody. I think the the in this example, what had come up often is that sometimes um, you know strategic decisions are made just by two people 
in a private Slack channel. And that may not be helpful for a project. So just how the project is continuing in this example to address communication transparency. It could honestly be in any way that is pertinent to that project. Again, these are just examples. Same with newcomer experiences. So how is a project working to attend to the experiences of newcomers, people wanting just to join the project and start participating? So again, it could be in a variety of different ways. We don't particularly care what those variety of ways are. Like we don't look at that list and say, this is a great way to do it, or this is a poor way to do it. We're just looking that the project provides some narrative around these four metrics as to how they're addressing them within their <clears throat> What we do then is we scan the DEI.md file to ensure that these headers are there, that they have addressed project access and so on and so forth, and that there's text below the headers that's not you know, just like just made up weird text, but that actually has some coherency to it. And that's really it. And then the evaluation of that text is really done by community members because we can't, we don't, we're not in a position to do an evaluation of whether or not it's true or not true. But the evaluation would come from community members. So there would be a, a sharing process that we encourage, you know, if you are a project and you're um, including the DI.md <laughs> file that you tell your community members, this is a file we're including. This is how we're addressing these four things. And the the management and the evaluation of that DEI.md file is, is within the, the project itself. All right, that, that sounds, that's a really great background. And thank you, Matt. I would be happy to take this list and maybe noodle on that. And we can do that here in this meeting after I've had a chance to think about it a little bit more, or we could do a sideline on this. I'm happy to do either one. I would do. What would you? How would you like me to do this in terms of just come to this meeting and offer things, or do a pull request on the repo or on this? Probably. File? I'm thinking now that we have this here. What do you think, Elizabeth? Process wise. Uh, great question. I think doing a PR would <clears throat> a little apparent for folks who may not be in this call or able to join. So I think let's try that. See how it goes. If that's okay with you, Ria, does that work for you? I think so. That I, I want to think about ways to cast this, but I, I think the the major things are we want a file that includes project access with examples that would be relevant to an actual coding project, as opposed to say a focus group like Chaos or DEI or whatever. And you want project access, communication, transparency, newcomers, and an inclusive leadership section and examples of what that would look like in an actual open source project. And I think some of that might be, do you post your roadmap uh, so that people know where things are going? Yes, and that would be, I would say that could be a trans, if you're thinking transparency, that would be a communication. Yes, that would be a perfect thing. Like we post our roadmap and we share it publicly. And that would be a great example that we could give to people. You bet. And Rhea, if you if you want to um, just propose some things before you actually submit the PR to you know change it, um, you're you're welcome to also take this uh, and put it in a Google Doc that we can work on informally here if that's easier, um, as opposed to you know like these are the changes I want to make kind of a thing. So. Absolutely. So I, I want to think about it a little bit more, and this is not really my main line specifically, but I work with a lot of people who it is their main line. So I think this would be an interesting exploration to have just because, it, A, it will foster those communications internally, which is a good thing anyway. And B, it might help add some additional ideas to this overall thing. Are you thinking about doing something like the Open SSF has with their best practices for security badge where you actually go through a template and you provide check we do this here's the url and it rates you and if you have x percent of the criteria fulfilled then you get passing badge if you have this percent of the criteria fulfilled you get a silver badge and if you have this percent of the criteria fulfilled you get a gold badge 
are you thinking something as formal as that or is it more of an informal you have this therefore you're getting a badge i would say it's the latter we familiar with so there is an application process you know by which somebody does have to apply for you know the project and they have to point to where the dei.md file is located and then but really beyond and then that's handed off to to Sean and a bunch of other folks Enoch who have been working on um ways to actually scan the file scan for the presence of the file and look at the file a little bit itself um but to your precise question no we weren't looking at at the open SSF process where it's a little bit more formal, it's really just about the presence of this document. Yeah. And that, it, it, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, no, it, that's an interesting process. I've been through it and it, it, you know, it combines attestations with scanning where it can. And so it's, it is interesting as a sort of, it's an, it's a different approach than we've tried to Matt's than, than we've envisioned here than to Matt's point though. I think initially having a group of humans who are evaluating this works fine because you're getting it off the ground. Eventually, though, this could become a scaling issue because Sean, you that's probably exactly, want to that's exactly that's why we're scanning. Or yeah, that's exactly it. Corpus of code that exists out there. You yeah. got it. And we no, actually, it's... as Elizabeth pointed out in the chat, we actually do for event badging. We do human reviews just because the volume of open source events is so much lower than the potential volume of projects that we've talked about the scaling issue over and over and over again <clears throat> so you're 100 correct all right so this gives me where how do you apply or or is the badge available for a project today or is this still in incubation it's an incubation yep. it's becoming closer we continue to work with uh, both both my team and Chaos Africa were continuing to iterate on the website and the badging process. Enoch, uh, Kingsley, and the rest of the Chaos Africa team have done a great deal of work on the website side, and it's very beautiful. In fact, um, I can I can drop a link to the site as it exists right now, even though that there's a few there's a few things that we're still working on, but like and some of the some of the flows we went over in an earlier call need to be updated for the getting started like when you hit get started it um <clears throat> it's it's not quite what we want it to be right now so if you hit login with github basically you search for a repo name to badge it um and i think if you scroll down you click the authorize all opens all in open source yeah well i'm not gonna do I it won't hurt you. It won't hurt. Well, no, I you don't. don't. Trust those folks. I don't know. Oh yeah, those people are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just didn't know like how far, how deeply it went. So. No, it, yeah, you don't have to go all the way. I just, um, I think it's a really good design. And when you go through the badging process, there's a couple of flow things that Kingsley and Precious and I'm gonna forget some names here. Maybe Ruth knows them all. Are gonna gonna update for us um, that we and we just reviewed those in a call right before this one. So. Mm -hmm. That being said, oh, sorry, Katie, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I wasn't muted. My dog grabbed a wrapper and I had to get it. <laughs> Dogs. They're everywhere. Hmm. Anyway, um, Rhea, to your point, we are also in a <clears throat> pilot stage. So if you have projects um, in your group that want to start building out their own DEI.md file, we can um, potentially run them through to help us test and build this out from the very beginning, because we we are that's we're just super early on. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Well, let me let me noodle on this a little bit, but it's a really interesting project, and you know, compliments to the whole team for coming up with it. Thanks. I would, based on the conversations we've been having, I would suspect that we will start opening it up for projects to apply in late summer, early fall. That's kind of where we're at. It is late summer. <laughs> well, later summer. Later summer. <laughs> even <laughs> later. It's even later <laughs> summer. Later summer. <laughs> there will be a point where I can't say summer anymore. So I still have a little room. <laughs> so that would be my guess. Like probably like August, September would be my guess when we kind of get through this pilot and we've 
uh, and Sean and everybody has kind of, you know, locked down the process. Cool, cool. And I'm just, do you have the, is it all in badging in GitHub? Are you accepting contributions on this thing as well? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Um, I think Enoch can point us to the different repositories. I'm not certain that I know them all. Are they under chaos or are they? Yeah, they're all in, let me get the link to them. They are, mm -hmm. um, like... I found at least one of them. Yeah, that under... one. Go ahead, Ruth. Right? Sorry. Yeah, no. They're under the all in org. Are you looking for the bot repository? Yeah. This is the one I found. Um, okay, that one should be the one for event badging. Are you okay. if you're event badging? Badge. Okay. Yes. Let me get you the one for um project badging. So they're all under here. There are about three repositories. Um with the where's the chat i'm just okay. curious why aren't these under the chaos repo it's a separate project that we're collaborating very closely with and i i think i don't really know the total reason but i think a lot of it is just clarity about purpose because there are a number of repos for all in open source and they have a purpose that is very closely aligned with chaos but it's also uh, the work is separate, so that's why. Are they also part of the Linux Foundation, or is I'm not familiar with this? Or they, I don't know how to answer that, but I would. I think I don't know if Sarah's on the call. My my answer would be that they're led by GitHub, and GitHub Microsoft is part of the Linux Foundation. So, and the Linux Foundation has actually collaborated very closely with all in open source um, over the last more than two years now. Elizabeth, do you have? I was just going to say, yeah, that's basically it. All, all in is a separate um, initiative on, underneath the GitHub. So there's all in for maintainers and all in for students. And it's uh, it's designed to open source diversity, equity, and inclusion in open source in general. And so this is just like one component of the all in for maintainers bit, if that makes sense, Ria. OK. Um, Hi, and Ria. I'm, oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi, Ria. My name is Sarah Oyutubo. I'm with the GitHub team, and I apologize. I just stepped away for two seconds to <laughs> get some water. I made some stuff up while you were going. <laughs> no, that was all correct. I'd be happy to connect with you on um, all, the All In program and how it came to fruition and the partnerships that we have had with Chaos and some other teams. Um, you can also check our site. I just dropped it in the Slack to just learn a little bit more about the program, what we've been um, building over the last couple of years, and actually would be happy to talk to you more about it as well. But uh, Chaos has been <coughs> one of our most esteemed partners from <laughs> start till now, and have played a huge role in co-creating this with us, along with a few other foundational partners, including the Linux Foundation. Nice. Uh, Thank you. Um, I've got I lots of links now to go investigate. Yeah, I'll select you my email address. Happy to connect anytime. I don't want to feed. I know that we're already over, so I don't want to eat up more of this meeting, but happy to connect with you to talk more about this anytime. Mm -hmm. Lovely to meet you. You too. Um, yeah, so we are a little bit over time. Thank you everyone for hanging out with us today and this great conversations. I love this meeting. It's one of my favorites. So um, happy to see everybody. We'll see you here same time next week. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye, everybody. You. Bye.